the absolute brilliancy queen side castle walmart bag aka sama kashaba sam both players are rated around around 1000 elo d4 d5 walmart bag is going to play a london system we have h6 which is a little bit atypical from black but not totally losing for any reason with e3 the opening is very normal knight f6 knight g3 and now bishop g4 pinning the knight to the queen. Walmart bag is going to just continue playing normal London stuff. Probably pawn c3, bringing the other knight out, maybe a kingside castle. e6, now that you've moved the bishop out, you can allow your other bishop to develop on the dark squares. Knight c3, a little bit unusual because usually in these types of systems, you play c3 and knight d2. Bishop b4, now pinning both knights. These bishops can obviously be kicked out pretty easily. And that's what, what white is going to do. White's going to start out by kicking out the kingside bishop, but black is going to retreat. And now the best way for white to capitalize on this is to just continue taking more space and just expand on the king side, which is what Walmart bag does. Bishop has to go back to g6. You can obviously take this bishop if you want and double up black's pawns. You could also castle and unpin yourself from this bishop. You could play something like knight e5 and move your knight into the center of the board. Walmart bag decides to take. Take, take, and now this file is open for black, which could cause some problems later on, but it's totally fine now because you still have plenty of time to develop. Queen d3, and now king f7. Now here's what's interesting about this position. Queen d3 does give you the option to recapture this knight with the queen in case black takes this. But I think actually what white was intending to do was also attack this weak pawn. And black had a bunch of different ways that they could have been totally fine here. Taking this knight and deflecting the queen off of attacking this pawn. Literally just pushing this pawn is probably the best move. Castling is even totally fine in this position. But instead of doing all of this, black decides to play king f7 to hold the pawn in place. But that move doesn't actually do anything because here white can just check the king and take the pawn anyways check king goes back and you're still gonna get the pawn either way so there was there was there was no reason to do that instead of putting the knight in the center walmart bag plays pawn a3 trying to kick out this bishop which also refuses to take the pony you could continue to expand with a move like b4 here that's totally fine but instead we have h4 likely with the idea to do something maybe like h5 or g5 and push forward on the side of the board the king's on which makes sense knight g4 because you played h4 you hung the g4 pawn now white has the opportunity to play a very nice move here rook g1 attacking this knight forcing it to retreat backwards and now winning this pawn and now you have this and takes and white is just steamrolling black here but walmart bag misses this remember this is a game between two 1000 so they're, they're gonna miss a few of these things like this it is a 10 minute game players are playing pretty quickly here but knight e5 gives black an opportunity to hold this game you're now allowing black to take this knight getting this knight out of danger while simultaneously trading away one of white's attacking pieces and after takes which by the way is a great move pretty much the only move in the position <laughs> otherwise you're moving your king and losing your knight and losing this pawn and losing the game pretty much so black takes and White takes back and for some reason, white does not take with the bishop. White needs to take like this because now your bishop is opened up along the board. The queen is still attacking this with the rook pressure here. But when you play a move like pawn takes, you are just locking your bishop out of the game on this diagonal. And after a move like g5, your bishop is entirely in jail. In fact, what winds up happening here is Bishop b6, whatever reason, I, I don't know why black moved this bishop. Black should probably just be like, you know, developing their other pieces or uh, play, playing literally anything else, but uh, b bishop back. But now h5 and now black can play g5 basically for free. And this bishop is completely immobilized. Best move here is long castles, though. Somehow you're OK giving up the bishop because you get queen g6. Oh, my God. Can you play queen g6 check now? You can play queen g6 check now. But black doesn't do that. Black takes the pawn instead of attacking the bishop. Black just takes. They're so scared of losing this pawn. But now rook takes. There's a lot of stuff eyeballing black's king and black decided not to castle for whatever reason. Black just decided to gallivant their king forwards to hold a pawn that was actually just completely unholdable. This file is now open in front of the king. The bishop, for some reason, white decided to trap behind its own their own pawn, and black just has no pieces developed. Black just has decided to shuffle the two bishops around. They traded their only active bishop away, and then this one just been kind of kind of booming around the, the freaking board. They haven't moved the knight. They haven't moved either of the two rooks. They have not moved the queen. Black is just not moving other pieces. Black needs to start getting things into the game. So finally, on the 16th move of the game, black develops their other knight. Knight! T5, 
takes on d5. And the idea is if black takes, you have now removed the defender of the f5 square. The queen is coming in, and this position is absolutely now dominating for white. You have the queen infiltrating. The rook is coming in. The pawn, the bishop... All the forces are coming to town on Black's king, and Black's most powerful pieces on the board have not even moved yet. Black is basically just playing this game without 19 points of material. The issue with knight takes d5 is Black doesn't have to take. In fact, Black has a move like c5, opening up the queen to capture here and attacking the, the queen at the same time. And actually, this is completely winning now. Queen slides out of the way. Queen takes, and now black is just up a full piece. This is just crushing now for black, but black doesn't see that move and plays bishop c5. This bishop, this dark square bishop has gone bishop b4, bishop b a5, then bishop b6 for no reason, and now bishop c5. What is this bishop doing? Let's play ring around the rosy. Why? Why did the bishop have to make this move? What is this bishop even targeting over here? And now white has the opportunity to play this absolutely 10,000 IQ idea, despite the fact that this is hanging, that your bishop is locked up in jail. To activate your final piece, we have the absolute brilliancy. Queenside castle! I have never seen a queenside castle be a brilliant move. This is absolutely wild, completely disregarding the fact that your knight is hanging because you still have queen d5 check, or queen takes d5 check now because now your queen is defended by the rook. Actually, after, kingside ca after queenside castle, black does finally decide to take the knight, but it doesn't matter because the queen is getting in. And even though this isn't the most accurate attack, this is an attack nonetheless. The king will be forced to take shelter in one of these two squares. The reason that actually queen takes on d5 is slightly better is because there is no way to shield this check with a piece. Technically, on this move, you have the absolutely ludicrous knight to f6, sacrificing your knight because at least this way, you could potentially um, activate your queen now and start to get your other pieces into the game. After the move g6, you are forking these pieces and somehow your king is, is somewhat safe. You have to play the move g4. You actually cannot take this queen. Oh, this check is best. Taking this pawn back, king takes... Oh my goodness, this is insane. Rook takes h5, hitting the queen, setting up something like this. Uh, this is just some some dank engine stuff here. But because black, it, it, this is a quite a difficult move to find, to calculate all that. Black plays the more natural move, which is retreating the king to g8. And now, queen e6, check. The king cannot come back out this way. The king going into the corner to absolutely suffocate, and there is actually a beautiful mate in two in this position. Feel free to pause the video and try to find it here. Rook takes h6, and you cannot take with the king, so the only legal move is taking with the pawn, and now queen f7. And this mate, where the king is suffocated between two of its own pieces, is called epaulette's mate. I actually learned this from a very awesome chess TikToker called the Chess Viking, which you guys should totally check out, by the way. Epaulette gets its name from the shoulder paddings soldiers used to wear, so you can think of the pieces next to the king as like its shoulder guards. Instead, white does decide to take on h6, which is not a guaranteed mate because it is not a check and you actually have queen e8 in this position. Attacks this rook, so if this bishop were to move with discovery in any way, for example, the bishop were to go here, you actually take this and black is doing okay here. Uh, if you take black's queen, now uh, black will take, activate the other rook, and again, even though you have like some sort of discoveries in the king, this is also totally fine for Black, who is actually up a piece. The game is equal, but instead, Black plays Knight f8, trying to perhaps attack the Queen, maybe get a Knight in to help with some of the defenses. And now there is a beautiful mate in one, Bishop f4, which also could have been achieved with Bishop f3. White does not find that and plays Queen f5 check. So now Black has the opportunity to play King g8, but instead, Black plays pawn g6. And now there is maiden one with queen f7. The combined accuracy of both players in this game was less than the accuracy of my less last rapid game. 80% combined. If you're enjoying this video on YouTube, do consider subscribing. And for real, for real, check out some of these other chess videos.
that are pretty amazing and awesome. You can see people in the chat here are, are hyping them up, right guys? So go check those ones out. 